Well, it's college football season when we are welcoming ESPN college football insider Trevor Maddich He's back, back on the show. Technically, it's a Maddich Thursday. We do Maddich Monday, but it's preseason. We don't care so one day. We have some preseason Maddich interviews on Thursday. Trevor, welcome back to the program. It's great to be back, guys. I can't wait for kickoff. Oh, man. Look at you, mountain man. Looking good. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I think my wife says she likes it. I think it's because it covers half my face, so I'll, I'll keep it as long <laughs> as she wants me to. Nature's mess. <laughs> Once again, it always matters what the wife cares about most. Trevor, uh, we were discussing in our opening segment the first three games for BYU specifically at USF, which is a sneaky game. BYU comes home to host the defending Big 12 champions, Baylor, and then they go on the road to Eugene and take on a very interesting Oregon team. That's two top 15 opponents in the first three games and a trip to Florida. Uh, what do you think of BYU's overall status uh, and the three games leading off the season and how they'll impact the entirety of the season? Well, it's, it's an opportunity to start fast or an opportunity to start slow. And so there's really a lot of, a lot of I don't want to say risk, but there is a lot of opportunity here in these first three games. The USF game is, is very tricky going to Tampa to play that game because USF's focused on this game the entire offseason, and the players will be focused on it, whereas BYU's players, the coaches try to focus them on that opener against the Bulls, but everybody knows that then comes Baylor, then at Oregon, and so how focused will BYU be? The, the, those first three games need to start with a win and a win with good execution against USF because without that, then they're on their heels heading into those other two. And when we look at the first three, the opportunity of a successful season we've just talked about really hinges on whether BYU can do that or not. Certainly they can recover like we talked about, but BYU no six and 07 had 11 and two seasons started one and two. They had to win 10 games in a row. How do you feel like BYU could fare in those first three in your opinion? You know, I think USF is, BYU should win that game, but ESPN's FBI football power index gives USF a 35% chance to beat BYU in that opener. So according to ESPN's FBI, it's not a slam dunk. They have almost everybody back on both sides of the ball. And Jerry Bohannon, the quarterback of Baylor that won the Big 12 championship with the Bears last year and helped to beat BYU last year. He is now the starting quarterback for South Florida. So there's all kinds of reasons for BYU to take that game very seriously. Baylor has one of the best combinations, offensive line and defensive line in all of college football. I mean, they will be a physical meat grinder in the trenches. Now, BYU is in better shape now because BYU also has one of the best offensive lines in college football. And it being early in the season, assuming they get out of USF healthy, they'll have a lot more depth to rotate through on their defensive line, but that'll be brutally physical. And then Oregon also has one of the best combinations of offensive line plus front seven defensive line and linebackers in all of college football. So, so those two games right there at the very beginning of the, of the season will test BYU's not just skill, but test their physicality and their depth. I mean, there is a lot of risk there, but once again, a lot of opportunity because BYU is also better than it was. ESPN College Football Insider and Analyst Trevor Maddich is back on BYU Sports Nation. It feels dramatic, Trevor, to ask this and think this, but does the overall success of BYU season hinge on the results of the first three games? It does not. I mean, you guys mentioned it. The, if, they, if they win, if they go 3-0, and I mean, as a hypothetical, that would be just astonishing, and it gives them a lot of slack. And heading into another brutal month of October. If they go one and two, then they've got to succeed in October in order to have the kind of season that they want. Because I mean, we talk about Oregon and Baylor, both top 11 preseason poll. Then you've got in October, Notre Dame and Arkansas. And those two are also two of the most physical offensive and defensive lines in all of college football, especially on the offensive side. So you've got four games, BYU, in September and then October against four of the most physical teams in the trenches that anybody will face all year long. And so if BYU struggles 
in September in those first three games. Then it makes it imperative that they play exceptionally well against Notre Dame and Arkansas and win at least one of those, if not both. But if BYU can split Baylor and Oregon, then they go into October with an opportunity to split those two and maybe even do better. Then all of a sudden, we look at this season in a completely different way. Because after that, the toughest game will be at Boise. And so... BYU has great opportunities, but what you don't want to do is put yourself behind the curve from the very beginning. Now there's pressure. Now people are talking about you. Now you're wondering what you can really be, right? They're much better off starting fast. And starting fast means to get out of the blocks and perform well against all three of those teams. And if they can win two of those three games, then this season has great promise even if they drop one of them in September. Absolutely. I love the way you quantified that, which is get to split with Baylor and Oregon, get to split with Notre Dame and Arkansas in some capacity. Obviously, if you can do better than that, that's great. But realistically, getting split in both would be very good. How do you feel about BYU this year and its potential to win, say, nine or ten games? Because a lot of the metrics and national analysts are saying BYU is kind of in the seven and eight range. We feel like BYU is more in the nine-plus range. How do you feel? I think from a skill standpoint and a depth standpoint, BYU is in as good a shape as they've been in a long, long time. And I think what analysts are looking at in some measure is FPI, Football Power Index. BYU is the underdog in five of their games. BYU, according to the FPI, as we sit here today, is uh, an underdog at Boise with a 43 percent chance to win against the Broncos on their home field, on Broncos' home field. And so... Uh, I think they're looking at that saying, okay, well, how can BYU win a lot of those games, especially because of the nature of, of the teams that they're playing? Uh, I agree with you, though. BYU's offensive line has a chance to be one of the best that they've ever had there. This is a deep receiving core. If the tight ends are healthy, they will be a threat. You've got you've got a good rotation at running back with the transfer in from Cal. And then if Jaron Hall can stay healthy at quarterback, this offense should be absolutely phenomenal. Then it's a matter of staying healthy on defense, especially up front. And the key to their season, really the key to those big games in September and October, may come down to the defensive line being able to generate pass rush. That, to me, is the key. You know, they've had to really bring linebackers to get consistent pass rush. And this year, Coach Shataki has talked about how this is maybe the fastest group of corners he's ever had. They may be able to leave those guys on an island a bit more and do some more blitzing and some crazy stuff up front. But still... The D-line has to be able to generate pass rush organically. And if they're able to do that, then I agree with you. That, that nine-win threshold, or maybe even more, uh, is available. But their, their floor will be determined by the health of the defense especially and the pass rush of the defensive line. The ceiling will be determined by the, the offense and if they're able to come together and be everything that we think they can be. Trevor, I'm hearing you talk about all the dynamics of this BYU football team that we have analyzed and overanalyzed ad nauseum over the last few months. And I'm looking at that number 25 ranking in the AP preseason poll and, and still kind of feeling like BYU, in my completely unbiased opinion, <laughs> that they're ranked a little bit lower than I thought they should have been. How do you feel about BYU's preseason ranking and where they stack up against the rest of the top 25? Yeah, not terribly biased, although I do see the color of the shirt that you're wearing. There. <laughs> I, I, you know, the, being ranked 25, I think a lot of a lot of BYU fans would be disappointed by because I think this is a much better team than that. I think somewhere somewhere between maybe 18 and 15 it would be a good place to put them until we learn a bit more about their defense. But being ranked preseason hasn't happened for a while. What's yeah. it been, like over a decade since they were ranked in the yep. preseason? 13 years. And, and that's a yeah, and that's important, and I think that is a testament to the the respect that BYU has been able to, to garner in the national media and through the national coaches as well with the way that they performed over the last you know period of time under Coach Sataki. And so I think people look at BYU now a little bit differently than they did before. Instead of saying, hey, prove it, they say, you know what, we think you're really good, and they start that way. Now, the fact that they're in there at number 25 is a talking point, but it also is a point of visibility. Because, you know, the higher you start, when you win, the easier it is to stay up higher, right? And so they've got a lot of ground to make up in order to have the fantasy season that they want. The good news is, though, being ranked 25th in the, in the preseason has absolutely zero effect on that fantasy outcome. The hypothetical that the most rabid fans are thinking about every season, can BYU make the playoff? 
Well, their preseason ranking isn't going to affect that because the schedule that they have, if they have uh, no losses or even one loss, BYU is going to be in that discussion. No losses, they're in. They have to be. The uh, With one loss, they're in the discussion. So BYU does control their own destiny there. So I, I, I see it as a positive that they're ranked at all preseason just because it hasn't happened for a long time. Now, keep in mind, I'm not predicting they're going to run the table. I'm saying that they will have a chance to win every game they play. And so we'll see what happens one by one by one. ESPN's Trevor Manish says BYU will go undefeated this season. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, uh, there you go. Let's talk about the Big Ten <laughs> uh, new TV deal. Comes out this morning, starting next fall. Seven-year deal, seven billion dollars, uh, a bill a year, sixty-two and a half mil average per team. What do you think of that? And then how do you think that affects BYU's uh, Big Twelve deal coming up in 2025? I don't think it will affect uh, the Big 12 deal directly. Obviously, the the teams not, or excuse me, the conferences not named Big 10 and SEC are going to be way behind, way behind in terms of of money per school. But there's a couple things happening here. One is that as streaming continues to dominate, as binge watching continues to dominate, live sports continue to become more and more important because advertisers know that. You can't record a, a live game and then watch it later, really. It just people you can, but people don't do that. They're right there in front of the TV. So they're not fast forwarding through commercials for the most part. They are they are sitting there watching the game. And there's a lot of value to that. And so we don't know the full effect of the of competition that may happen with streaming companies for the remaining grants of rights for the remaining broadcast rights beyond the ACC, which has got 14 years to go on theirs, and then the <laughs> Big Ten and then the SEC. You know, as as the as the Big 12 and Pac-12 come up, you know, the Pac-12 first and the Big 12, you, you've got, if you have competition among streaming companies, they will bid up the price because the Big 12 and the Pac-12 will be the, the next best thing that's available for them if they want to get into the live sports game. And that's important. And with this Big 10 deal, uh, NBC is a part of it, and they will be streaming games on Peacock. That's important because what is Discovery Plus thinking? What is Apple TV thinking? Does Netflix want to jump into this? Does Amazon Prime want to jump into more than they already have with the NFL Thursday night package? And so these are things that we don't know. So I wouldn't automatically assume that the Big 12 and the Pac-10 and, and Pac-12, Pac-10 now, I guess, going forward, I wouldn't automatically assume that they're going to be poppers. Let's wait and see what the next deal brings to see if there is competition among the streaming companies because that could be a huge game changer. Trevor Maddich is worth $62.5 million per year as a college football analyst, and I will die Ooh. on that hill. Trevor, it's great to catch up with you again. Looking forward to a fantastic college football season. I want you to know that I got the 62 and a half so I could share that half with you guys. <laughs> we'll take anything we can get. Thanks, Trevor. All right, guys. Trevor Maddich. I'd take that half. He's back, baby. I'd take that half that means right college, now. That means college football is basically back. Yeah, it's, it's, we're so close, man. We're so close.